This is the second part of our series on dynamic blocks. We'll discuss how to create dynamic blocks with multiple insertion points and alignments. To create a block, we'll need some existing objects such as lines or polylines to turn into a block. So I'm just going to make a rectangle right here and I'll just make it right here. I could specify its dimensions by clicking on the dimensions button right here. So let's say that the rectangle is going to be five units long and then about three units wide. Here is our new rectangle and in order to place it, I just need to click and there it is. So now we can take this rectangle and we could add more lines to it. It doesn't just have to be one polyline. So for example, if I had a border that I wanted to give around this rectangle, I could use the offset command and let's specify a distance of 0.25 and we'll go from the inside. And now it looks like we have a nice little table that has some assets. What I'm also going to do is I'm going to add some lines in the corners right here to make it look like it's a bit more three dimensional and it has some depth to it. So now we can see we have a nice little border around the table and here's the table itself. So now that we're ready, we can go to the insert tab in our ribbon and in the block definition panel, we can see create block. We have two options here. If we click on the drop down, we can create a block or we can write a block. And writing the block essentially saves any lines and other blocks as a file in itself. If you just create a block, then the block itself will be in AutoCAD and its file will be located in one of the folders in AutoCAD's folders. So we're going to click on Create Block. Now the block definition dialog pops up and we'll need to give this block a name. So we're going to call it AR underscore table. My initials are AR. And that way I'm going to keep this block at the top of the list because the letter A is first in the alphabet. Then under base point objects and behavior, we need to choose what we're going to be doing with these three options. So if we specify on screen, then initially we're going to be able to just choose whatever objects we need for the base point and for the objects. If we don't, then pick points is available to us and we can actually choose an X, Y and Z axis in order to pick specific points that we don't necessarily want to draw a box over. So we could do that if we already know that. But I'm just going to specify on screen. It's a little bit more manual this way, but a little bit faster if we do it that way. And with objects, we have the same scenario. If I uncheck specify on screen, then we can select our objects using the select objects button here. But I'm just going to specify them on screen, going to make that a little bit simpler. And these options down here are very important. So what we'll need to do is, is if we want to retain, then that means that each of the objects that are going to be part of this block will still be separate assets or can convert them all into a block, which is usually the default setting, which is a little bit easier to work with. That means the, that all the objects will not be individual. They will be considered one block object. And we could actually convert objects into a block and then delete the previous objects immediately. That could be done to expedite the process, but we're just going to convert them to a block. So everything looks ready to go. We're just going to click OK. First, we can see at the bottom of our screen, we have some instructions and next to our cursor, because we have dynamic input, it says specify insertion base point. This is going to be where our cursor will be and when we insert the block. So typically for a table, you want to insert it either by its center or by one of its edges. What I'm going to do is, is I'm going to set its base point in the dead center of the table for now, and then we're going to use the points parameter to add more points to this table once we go and edit it. So for now, there's our base point. Immediately after, we're asked to select objects that will be part of the block. So of course, I'm going to select all of these objects right here and then right click or click enter. Now that I'm done, I can mouse over this block and this block has now converted all of the assets into a block. So the other settings that we saw earlier allowed us to either retain these assets and just make a block that we would find under insert. Here's our block right here, for example. But in this case, I wanted to convert these lines. I don't need them to be individual lines, so all of our settings were fine. Now that this is a block, we have a few options. If we just double click on the block, then we have this edit block definition area. And this essentially allows us to choose any blocks that we have that as part of AutoCAD, and we can edit them right here. And we can click OK, and then it's going to open the block editor dialog. Now I'm going to click on the close block editor dialog first because I want to show you a different way of doing this and I believe it's a little bit faster. Instead of double clicking on an object, you can just select it and then right click and we have other options. We have block editor and edit block in place. 
So I like to use the block editor a bit more than edit block in place because I believe it has a few more options and edit block in place will essentially allow you to modify it right here in model space, but that isn't really necessary. So let's use the block editor. And now that we're in the block editor, you can see that the block authoring palettes right here has now opened up. You can find that in your ribbon right here. So I can turn it on and off just like that. And looks like mine is not auto hiding. That is good. We're going to leave it open and we're going to use some of our parameters to turn this block into a dynamic block. Let's begin by placing some parameters on our block. And the first one that we'll use is the point parameter. This allows us to have more than one insertion point when we insert this block. So when we insert this table, we can align it to the wall from this top part or the left or the right or the bottom, or we could even place insertion points at the corners. We already have one base point and the base point parameter is right here. We can only have one base point. So the base point will be in the center of the block. And we could change that if we want to, but we'll leave it like that for now. Let's click on point. Now we're going to specify its location so we can just click anywhere. So let's use the corners as our first example. And immediately after we can see that we can place its label. So I can see that if I place it about 0.1 units to the left of where it is, it should look quite nice. And as we zoom out, these labels actually increase in size and then decrease in size as we zoom in. Now you'll see an exclamation mark next to this label. And that means that if we mouse over it, it just set it right there. There are no actions associated with this parameter. So right now there are just points that don't have any actions and we can find the actions tab right here. We're going to get into the actions a little bit later because right now these points don't necessarily need actions and we can still use them as they are. But these points are great if we need to specify certain actions such as stretching from a certain line or a point or to use the flip option, for example, or even the move option. Well, let's go back to parameters and let's add three more points. So I'm going to add one right here, about 0.1 away. That'll be position two. Let's add one right here. We'll put it 0.1 to the left. That's position three. And you'll see that they're automatically numbering themselves. So we don't have to worry about giving them any labels. We could rename this, these if we needed to. So I could click on this and then go to the position name here in properties. And I can rename position four to anything that I want. But I'll leave it like that. I think that's quite nice. So we now have our four corner points. So we can place this in a corner if we needed to. Now, in the block editor, we can see at the top of our tab, we have the block editor open. And besides some of the buttons here that we'll look at a little bit later, we can use the close block editor to essentially save what we're doing. If we want to save our work and continue editing a block, we can see that save block is here on the left side. But let's close the block editor and test our four points. So we'll click on close. It's going to ask us if we want to save. We could have saved beforehand, but it doesn't really matter. So we're going to say save. And now we're back to our model. Now we can click on our existing block and notice that basically we can't really tell if there are other points. And for existing blocks that have been placed, any changes that were made are not necessarily going to apply. So let's go to insert, click on the drop down, and then we have our table right here. Now when we insert it, we can then use the control key to specify which point we want to use. So as you can see, every time I press control, I'm switching between the points in the order that I made them. And so you can see that now we're at point four, back to the base point, point one, two, three, and then four. And so if we needed to place this in the corner and touch this block, for example, we could do that perfectly without having to place the block and then click on it and then go and use the move command and then move it in place. So we've now saved a lot of time by making points and using them wisely. Let's edit our block one more time. And this time we're going to use another parameter and that is the alignment parameter. So how it works is, is it allows us to essentially align any object to another object so that they're basically parallel to each other. And so how we do it is we can specify the center of what line we want to align. So in this case, this line is going to be perfect right here. And then we need to draw our alignment direction. We also have the option to specify an alignment type. So I can type the T key. And now I can choose between a perpendicular alignment or a tangential one. Perpendicular works very well for straight lines and tangential works perfectly for circles and arcs. And that way, when you draw your circles and arcs and attach them to other objects, they'll be perfectly tangential if you want them to. In this case, we're going to keep alignment or excuse me, keep perpendicular. 
And now, the way that we draw our alignment is important because the direction that it's going to be facing is going to be determined based on whether we draw from the right or the left of where we started. So if we start from the right side here, and then we could pass our object a little bit if we wanted to, but I'm just going to go right to the corner right here. And when the alignment symbol is pointing outwards, then we know that it was done correctly. So because we drew from the right, it worked very well. Now we can see that the symbol is pointing up, so that means that this edge right here will try to align and then uh, rotate the object according to whatever object we're trying to align to. Let's make all alignments on all the other sides as well. So I'll make one right here. That one was drawn correctly. Let's make one right here and draw this one up here. And look at that. This one's facing inwards, so now we know that we need to actually draw to the right of it. So we're going to just delete this make one more, and we'll draw it down here this time. There we go, that direction is perfect. And let's do our last one, let's draw it in this direction. This was not correct, so I'll draw it one more time. And you can essentially think of it as drawing in reference to the alignment in order to make sure that it aligns correctly. So if we're facing downwards, always go to the right. So to the left, we go up. And up here, we just go to the right. And now our alignments are perfect, so let's test them out. We could test the block by using the test block action, but I actually like to close the block editor and actually test my block in my model space because sometimes there's a few nuances there that might not be present in the test block area. So let's close our block editor and save our changes. Now let's insert our block again, just to have a new one, a fresh one, just to add on to what we're already doing. And here we are. Firstly, we'll use control to switch to another point. And what we can do essentially now is, is we could place this based on our point, and then afterwards we could then move it to a line. So what I'm gonna do is, is I'm gonna place this block right here. Then I'm gonna go and I'm gonna draw a line, and I'm just gonna draw it at a very arbitrary angle. So I'm turning off ortho. I'm not gonna really look at my angle. Perfect. Now let's test and see it. And look at that. As soon as we select our block, we can see that we have all of our alignments visible. While you might have noticed that the points that we made are not visible, except for the base point. So that's an important note to keep in mind. We're going to take this alignment right here, and there it is. Look how beautiful. And regardless of what snaps you have turned on, for example, I don't have nearest turned on. I always keep extension, nearest, and parallel off because they tend to interfere with one another, and I only turn them on when I need them. But you'll notice that if I'm using the alignment grip, the nearest snap actually turns itself on, and we can see the symbol right there. So it's very flexible, and it temporarily turns on certain snaps in order to get you the result that you want. And there it is. In basically a few seconds, I was able to align this properly. I didn't have to use the rotate tool, and sometimes you'll have to rotate by reference if the angle isn't specified. So now we've saved a lot of time by using alignments. This is the end of the second part of our series on dynamic blocks. Part 3 covers how to create the rotation and flip parameters for your blocks in AutoCAD. We'll see you there.